Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is good and his mercies endureth forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's start with Colossians 3 and 15. Let the peace of God rule in your heart to the which you are also called in one body and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and Father by him. So it's Thanksgiving. He's, he's talking about being thankful. He's talking about being Hallelujah. thankful. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. We might even be turned down there. Anyway, I just want to make sure we got some, got some sound going on here. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord is good. And my, uh, my mother went to heaven yesterday. And uh, um, hallelujah, thank you. It was, a, you know, it was a home going. It was a glorious home going. And my dad died um, uh, 12 years ago. And uh, I think, yeah, 12 years ago. And um, my dad was, was a, uh, my dad was a good man. And he was, <coughs> excuse me, he wasn't perfect, you know. He uh, made mistakes, just like everybody makes mistakes. And there were things that he didn't do as well as he would have liked to. There are things that, you know, that, that he could, could, could have done better. Frankly, I don't remember what those things were. Uh, because when, when, my, when my father died, uh, you know, the Lord really worked on me to make sure that I caused myself to remember what I was thankful for and to remember the good things, you know. And uh, I had, uh, shortly before my dad died, I had done a, um, uh, maybe it wasn't shortly, it was, before. It was a few years before I had, I beg your pardon, Don. It was several years before I had done a, um, a, tribute. a tribute to my dad, you know, yes. and uh, of the different things, you know. And that was something that helped me really enormously yes. to be able to, um, once again, you focus in on what was good, you know. And uh, you focus on what was good. You forget what wasn't good. You know, you try to push that aside because, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to help you enormously to do that. And that's what happened with my dad was, um, once again, I, he was a person like anybody else, you know. But he loved me yes. and uh, he cared for me. He wanted the best for me. And uh, he did the best that he could do by all of his children. And he was a good man. And, um, and, and I, as I say, I, I, quite frankly, I, I never think about the things in all these years, I've never thought about the things that my dad didn't do right or that my dad failed in because I purposed in my heart that I was going to remember the good. And, uh, and, and God helps you in that. God will work with you in, 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 in yes. that and help you. And I'd like to do the same thing with my mother, you know. Uh, like I say, she just went to heaven yesterday. And we talked about some of the, some of the things that I was so thankful for her on last Sunday uh, about. But, I, you know, I made a list today of, of, of different things, you know, that I thought would be, would be uh, really good. And I encourage you, you know, whether it's a, a spouse uh, or, uh, uh, you know, uh, even an ex-spouse, you know, uh, or it's a, a mother or a father or, or a whatever, you know, a brother or sister or something like that, you know, that you cause yourself to focus on the, the, the right things. I mean, we're told to be thankful. The word is, the word of Bible, we'll look at some scriptures here in just a minute. We'll look at some, some scriptures, but the word is clear about being thankful, about being a thankful person. And, you know, I, the people who know me well have heard me say this before. There is nothing that is quite as unattractive to me as a person who's not thankful. And, uh, and, and, and that has nothing to do with the physical and everything to do with the thankful heart, you know. And if a person is not grateful, and, uh, you know, we recently, I, I, we had a, a, a hurricane that came through here a couple, you know, 10 days ago or so, something like that. It wasn't, it wasn't very long back. And um, it, 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 uh, and it, it was last, it was a week ago. And, uh, and it was, it was brutal. It, it, the, the devastation that it wrought in the, uh, to the south of us was just 
horrific, just truly horrific. And um, the the some of those areas we actually do business in where 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 went where it went through there. And uh, so I talk I've talked to a lot of people. There are people that we 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 uh, you know that we work with in those areas in Fort Myers particularly. We have several different subcontractors that are based in Fort Myers that we work with. We have. Uh, 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 some administrative companies that we work with that are that are based in Fort Myers, and so we had an opportunity to talk to. I had an opportunity to talk to a lot of people that you know have been in the areas that were severely affected, those who were moderately affected, and those who who escaped being affected at all. For example, in our area here, for the most part, we completely escaped any. Um, devastating effects from that hurricane whatsoever. Although it was originally forecast to come through here, right, right through our, our our area, the Tampa Bay area, and it was forecast to come up the bay, and uh, it just did not. It it, it actually hit down in Fort Myers and <coughs> Fort Myers and Naples area. And of all the people that I talked to, there was exactly one who said that he was thankful to God for sparing him from the effects of the uh, the hurricane. One out of all the hundreds of people, you know, that I've talked to, there were uh, people who expressed gratitude because we dodged a bullet, you know. There were people who expressed gratitude because, man, we were, we were really, really lucky. No, we weren't lucky. We were the protected of the Lord is what we were. And that to, we want to be sure that we're th we have a thankful heart and we're thankful for what we're supposed to be thankful for. And not something like luck or not something like the, you know, this. No, no, no. It was Psalm 91 in action. For some of us that prayed and believe and have stood on Psalm 91, it was God doing what God promised by covenant that he would do. That's what it was. And that's what we're thankful for. What we're thankful for more than anything else is God doing that. And so I want to encourage you once again that, that to, to, to be a thankful person is, uh, is such an extraordinary uh, quality and to be an unthankful person is exactly the opposite. It's perhaps one of the most unattractive things that, that a person can be. But anyway, so I, I you know, I had an opportunity to, re, you know, think again about my, my, my mother and, and uh, you know, the closing of, of the chapter with her. She's now in the arms of Jesus, you know, and, and, uh, and, and she, I can guarantee you she's enjoying life more today than she did yesterday. <laughs> yes. It's a whole lot better today than it was yes. yesterday. And, uh, but, you know, we, we, you know, one of the things, some of the things I talked about on Sunday was she established in us the habit of going to church. And it was important because sometimes it's not that difficult to establish habits, you know, and you can establish a habit before you even know you've established a habit. It's just, it's something that's in the human condition that we establish a habit. And, and the word habit simply means that the more often you do it, the easier it gets each time. You know, and uh, but my mother established the habit of going to church every Sunday, and that's a habit that that uh, uh, Pastor Gail and I have. Uh, you know, we did it before we got married. We did it before we met. We did it before we got married. Um, we, we in in our in our separate lives, we did it, and then after we got uh, together. Um, as I said, we, we, we can count on the fingers of one hand the number of Sundays we've missed in the last thirty years. And uh, uh, probably the fingers of both hands, the number of Wednesday nights we've, we've missed in the last 30 years. So there was a habit, but that habit I could trace all the way back to my mother's duty to what she felt was a duty to her family. Because at the time, my dad was, was barely saved. He was probably saved, but he was barely saved. But my mom would make him and the kids all, we'd go to church every Sunday, you know, and we'd go Sunday night, and sometimes we'd go Wednesday or Thursday night or whatever happened to be going on. But it was a habit that she uh, established, and it was a wonderful, wonderful habit. And all these years, I can trace that back and say that's where the, the you know the habit be, began. She established. I was telling my, my kids this. I was telling Mike, and I was telling Gail this. She established in me the heart of being a saver, which was an incredible thing. You know, really, when I, I think back on it, because um, I had you know I always worked as a, as a kid. I would mow lawns in the neighborhood, you know, and I made good money, um, you know, working in the neighborhood as a kid, even up until, you know, I, uh, uh, even up through high school, I had my own business 
and uh, I had a, a vehicle and a trailer and equipment, you know, and, and that's what I did. And I made good money. I was never short of money as a, as a kid. And, uh, but my mother would, would absolutely insist she would make me save a portion of the money that I earned. And uh, she would take it. She, I mean, she knew about what I was making, you know. So she would take a certain portion from me. She'd make me give her a certain portion of it, and she'd put it away for me. And then as I got just a little bit older than that, well, I, I set up a, a bank account. You know, they, she and my dad helped me set up a bank account at the bank. And back then, now today, I think you got to be a certain age to set up a bank account. You were but 10. Didn't you say I was eight. I was I remember eight. Remember being eight years old and having <laughs> a bank account when I was eight years old. And back in those days, they didn't have computers. You know, they had these little, uh, uh, it was a passbook. It's called it. And in fact, they called the accounts passbook savings account. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in the little passbook, they would they would post your, your uh, money, you know? And I was fascinated that every three months I could take my little book into the bank and they would post the interest that I had earned. And it, you know, maybe it was a dime, you know, or something like that. It wasn't very much, but the idea was that here I'm getting a return on my <laughs> invested money. And, uh, but, sh but, but I don't know that I would have ever gotten there had it not been for that habit that she, she established in me to, to, to be a saver. And it was a wonderful habit because the, the habit of saver is a prerequisite to becoming a habit of an investor, you know, because if you don't have anything to invest, uh, you, you know, you're not going to be an investor if you don't have anything to invest. Right. And so I had to have money saved in order to be an investor. So all my adult life, I've been an investor. And, uh, and, and the reality was that I can trace it all the way back to that habit of l spending less than you earn, you know? And uh, that was something that she established in, in, in me. It was a gift to the children. She, um, um, one, one of the things that she used to do, what, and, and, and I, 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 once again, I, I mean, it was a biblical thing. It came from the word. You know, the word told in the, in the word to consider others better than yourself. And that was something that she just hammered home in me as a child, you know, that you don't consider yourself better than anybody else, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what they look like, no matter what they, you know, where they came from, no matter what the deal was, you were to consider others before your, yourself. And it became a habit. It was something that... Uh, that, that, that just has stuck with me my, my entire life. You know, she modeled a heart after God. I mean, she was one of the first persons that I ever knew or ever met who really lived her faith, you know, that she, she did uh, evangelism things and she would do outreaches with the church and, and things of that nature. You know, they had a, a they, the, the church at the time had a, that we belonged to did a, a mission down in the... Uh, Prison. No, it was, it was in the... Um, it was in the, at the time, it was, it was a, a, a homeless area, mm -hmm. but the people weren't homeless. They, would, they, they had a place for them to go, but they were for basically recovering alcoholics and things of that nature, and they would go and they would minister to the people, you know? And so she was part of that group, and she was ministering people who actually lived their faith, and I was able to see that. And... All those, all those years later, that, I mean, it was something that just so registered in me. And all those years later, all the people that I had met, all the people that I knew, I, I never saw, I almost never saw anybody like that until I met Pastor Gail. And Pastor Gail was like that. She was a woman who, who lived her faith, you know, who, who believed in her faith. And it was such an incredibly attractive quality. But, you know, it... it went back to my roots of seeing that, my, you know, my mother do that. And that was a, 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 was a wonderful thing. She, so she lived her faith, you know. Um, one of the things I talked about last Sunday was she never brought up what you did wrong, you know. I mean, we all made mistakes. And, you know, some of, them, some of the mistakes were bigger than others, you know. Some of them were a lot more serious than others, you know. They never, she never brought them up again, you know. If you, you, you did it, you, you paid for it, you know, whatever it was. There was a punishment. And there was always a punishment, you know. If you did something wrong, there was a punishment. But you served your time, you did your punishment or whatever it happened to be. And they just never, and my dad was the same way. They did not bring it up again, which was really, it was a, was a, uh, was an, 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 a, was a wonderful, wonderful quality. Yes, yes. And um, yes. 
she, she modeled, you know, a, a, a wife who was committed to her husband. I mean, my, my mother and my father were married for over 60 years when my, when my father passed away. And uh, this is in, in, in the world that we live in is so rare, so un, unheard of, you know, that they were, were married for, for 60 years. And, you know, like other people, they fought. You know, they had their, their battles and things like that. But she supported my dad. She loved my dad. She cared. You know, she, 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 she was, was a support for him. She, she trusted him. She believed him. And he likewise her. I mean, they had that kind of a relationship that, that she supported her husband. You know, she, she loved it and modeled a wife who, who supported her, uh, her husband. She mother, modeled a mother who was committed to her children, you know. And, uh, and her grandchildren, and her great-grandchildren as yes. well. I mean, she had a lot of them. I don't even know how many she had. But, um, but she modeled somebody who was committed to the lives of those children and committed. And like, I, I know that there were relatives, uh, my, 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 my cousins and, and uh, cousins and, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They were, they were relatives that were perhaps a little disadvantaged or a little... Uh, underprivileged, and she would watch them, you know, so that the, the parents could work, so that the mother could work. She'd watch those kids. She'd take them into her house and, and watch them, you know. So she she modeled a person was who was committed to her children. She was committed to her church. I mean, she served her her church. She, she you know, she never talked about the church. She didn't talk about the people yeah. or anything. And uh, I remember they after uh, a number of years, for whatever reason, I, I wasn't privy to it. This was after I had, had grown and left the house. They changed churches and uh, they started going to another church. And it was, it was a major, major thing for them, you know, to, to really make sure that they had gotten the word of the Lord, that they were supposed to go and go to this, this new place. And so they, they were committed to the places that they, they went, you know. She was committed to her own parents. She honored her, she honored her own parents. Both my parents honored their, their own parents, and they also honored each other's parents as well. And it was, a, it was a remarkable thing. My mother honored her mother and her father. She loved her mother and father and honored them. And they were fine people, you know. They were wonderful, wonderful people. And, uh, but she honored my, my, my father's mother as well, who was a little harder to get along with, you know, a little more, a little more distant of a person, you know. Just a, little, just, just a little bit harder. But she honored my, my father's mother as well. And uh, so she, she, you know, she was a committed daughter. Um, she com was committed to her parents. She was a committed mother, committed, once again, a committed grandmother and so forth. Those are extraordinary qualities, you know. She valued work. She was a worker. I mean, she was, my, my mother was never not working, you know. She, even when she, when, when we were kids in the house, you know, she was always doing something. And uh, when we, when, when my, my youngest, uh, when the youngest child in the family got to be about high school age, she went back to college. And uh, she got a college degree, and then she got a master's degree. And uh, she became a teacher. And for the next 30 years, she was a teacher, you know, after, after the kids had, had left the house. And long after my dad retired, she continued teaching. You know, she was, she was a worker. And she was, she was a, a teacher, and she valued education. Of course, again, she, she had a master's degree, you know, in, uh, in, in education. She was a friend to many people, and uh, she was generous to many people. Just a, a, had a, 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 a generosity that was, the, the, it, the, the generosity came by, from her father. Her, my grandfather was the most generous human being I ever met. You know, it's just extraordinary how uh, just uncommonly, incredibly generous he was to everybody. And uh, he was constantly giving to just everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, to his neighbors, to the people that lived around him, to the people that worked with him, the people that he knew. I mean, it's just, it's who he was. He was a sower. He was a, he was, he was a giver. And my mother got that, you know. It would be difficult to get it as, like my, my grandfather had it, because there's nobody, it was never by, I never met anybody quite like him uh, in, in that category. But she was like that as well. She was a sower. She was a giver, you know. And, and she, she wasn't motivated by 
things. She wasn't motivated by money, you know. She was motivated by, by the ability to help people, by just being a giver and helping people. So she was an extraordinary friend to people, you know. Um, she was a great sister to her siblings. She had a brother and a sister. And uh, she, was, she was wonderfully kind and had wonderful relationships with both of them. With, uh, with, with her brother and Sam. It's envious, it's almost envious in today's world how well she got along with her siblings, you know, and how much she loved and supported her, 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 her siblings. Mm -hmm. And uh, she loved her children and, you know, su supported them. But, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Uh -huh. I thought it was Nanny. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it might have been. It could have been. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, she, uh, she, you know, interestingly enough, she valued exercise. You know, uh, she made sure that her children were not lazy, that they weren't just hanging around watching the TV and being couch potatoes and so forth. And she herself was, uh, uh, she, she used to, she was a bike rider and she rode an enormous distances, you know, with her bike in, in, in training. And, and uh, until she had an accident, she was hit on a car. She was, she was riding her bike one morning early in the morning and, and a car hit her. And uh, just, it was a horrible, horrible accident. She was, had all kinds of broken bones everywhere. It was in the hospital for a long, long time. And after that, she could never ride again. But up until then, she rode that bicycle every single day. And, uh, but, but she saw to it that her children were active, you know, that we played sports, that we, were, we weren't just gonna sit around and do nothing, you know, we were either gonna be working or we were gonna be playing sports, <laughs> and one, one or the other. And uh, it was a great thing. You know, probably more, and, and, and she was a submissive wife. She submitted, my, my dad was a very dictatorial man. He was a very, you know, what do you call it? Autocratic, is that, is that the word? Um, he was, he was, he was, you know, my dad saw things one way, and uh, he, he just expected you to line up, and she would. She she was a submissive wife to you know to my dad, and uh, which was a was a was a wonderful quality. Um, she and she she was a forgiver, you know, because she and my dad they'd have arguments, but she always forgive. And if you had an argument with her, she was just she was a forgiver. She just didn't. And those qualities. Were, were so indicative of a person committed to God, a person so uh, who, who lived by the word, even if they weren't thinking about the word, you know, they were living by the word. And uh, she was a forgiver of the word. You know, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that he wrote his laws on our hearts and our minds, you know. And, uh, and so if his law was written on your heart and mind, you ought to be trying to do it instinctively, you know. Yeah. You should be, be, and the Holy Spirit would be working on you to do those things instinctively. And I think with her, it certainly did, although she was a student of the word. I mean, her, her, she was always sitting at the dining room table. She, that was her office. Her office was, was the dining room table. And she had her, her Bible out and she had her books out. And it was all spread all over the dining room table. And she was always reading her Bible. She was always in the, uh, in, in the book. And, and it was, a, it was a, just a, a wonderful quality. So I just, you know, I'm thankful for the legacy. It was extraordinary legacy. And, uh, and, and I'm thankful for those things. And I just, you know, I would encourage you, what, who, who, you know, wh whoever it was, whatever the situation was, that focus on what's memorable, what's worth remembering. The things that aren't worth remembering, forget them, you know, put, cast them aside. But what will happen is God will honor that. And those memories of the things that are not, and, and I have found this with not just my, my, my own parents, or my own father, but with other people as well. And again, my father was a good man. He, he made his mistakes. I don't even remember what they were now because I've been able to focus on the good and not pay attention to what was not good. You know, and I didn't even remember, and, and I don't even want to think about the things that weren't so good. What I remember was that he loved me, that he was a good man, yes. that he supported me, that he, yes. he, he he cared for me, as he did with all of his children. Yeah. And uh, it was, and it was a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I just encourage you, you know, make a, a, a memorial for for particularly if it's 
it's somebody that you know you had some difficulties with. Or difficult. If you will make a memorial remembering the good things, God will honor that. And what will happen is the, the things that weren't so good will begin to fade. And the things that were good will rise up to the forefront. And it will put you in a position that you can see, you know, the, the duty to honor your parents and duty, duty to honor your mother and father, that does not stop when they die. You know, or when they when they went on to heaven, or or even if they didn't go to heaven, the obligation to do that doesn't stop when they passed away. There should be a continual honoring there because God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him, and that's the it's the fourth commandment. And uh, so I just encourage you, you know, that uh, that that's something that you would do because it's something that God will continue to honor. Big part of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyway. Um, the other thing is, you know, you know, we all have uh, days of the blues and the blahs, you know, and uh, uh, particularly in in uh, those people that are in business, you know. Uh, I mean, it's easy to mo most of the people we interact with on a daily basis, and I'm sure that everybody that's in business is the same way. If there's something went wrong, it had to be somebody's fault other than their own. You know, and nine times out of ten, it was you. You know, it, 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 it'd be me. You know, like a, you know, if something goes if something goes wrong in our situation, it's, my customers it's always it's always my fault. It's never theirs. They never had anything to do with it. You know, it's it's uh, it, it's it's always mine. Elephant. And what can happen? Huh? The fake elephant, the lady telling you that he said she could buy the fake yeah. elephant, but yeah. it's not her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had, I'll tell that story because I know that that particular woman will never be watching one of them. <laughs> but she is a, a, a customer and she said, uh, uh, she, 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 she called me up one day and she said uh, um, she was going to buy this, she had bought this, um, it wasn't quite life size, but it was about 10 feet tall. It was an, it was an elephant, a, 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 like a, 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 a paper mache elephant. You know, uh, almost life size. Yeah, but, well, I mean, you know, it was made out of something. Not a statue. Uh, it, it was like a statue, but it wasn't iron or metal. It was something like maybe stuffing or paper mache or something like that, you know. And uh, it was like 10 feet tall. And she wanted to put it by her front door. And uh, uh, she was in the eyeglass business, so you want to have put, put eyeglasses on the elephant, you know so that it would be an advertisement for people in the outfit. And so I don't remember exactly how the subject came up, but I said, I'm sorry, you are not doing that. You know, in, in, in one of my professional business parks, you are not putting an elephant in there. She said, well, you said I could. And I said, oh, when did I say that? You know, well, you, you said I could. I asked you specifically, and you said I could. And I said, listen, I, you know, Sometimes people say things to me and I don't really hear them. You know, that happens. I mean, it can be, we can be talking about things. I say, but nobody ever would say to me that they were going to put a 10 foot elephant in their door and that I would, that that would be acceptable to me. <laughs> and we went round and round about it. And she said, well, I already bought it. You know, and I said, well, I'm sorry. I don't care. Maybe you can put it in your yard or something like that, you know. But you're not putting an elephant, a stuffed element in front of your office building, you know. And so I think eventually she sold it to somebody else or, or did, did, did something like that. But we had the same thing happen with a guy. He had these two lions. He bought these two lion statues, you know. And uh, he said, uh, um, He's got these two lion statues. And I said, I'm sorry. You're not putting lion statues in front of your office building, you know? Well, you said I could decorate it any way I wanted. You know, you said, and I said, well, we're not talking about lion statues in front of the building, you know? And he said, well, I'm gonna do it anyway, you know? So he, he puts, uh, uh, he, he does, he puts these two lion statues in front of his front door. And the it was a it was a master plan community, a large master plan community, and the master plan community came to him and said, you know, either you're moving those lines or we're going to move them, <laughs> but they're not going to be there. So fortunately, it wasn't me. In my case, it was me that said no elephant, you know. 
But in, in that case, the, the master plan community association came to him and said, now those lines are going, you know, one way or the other. <laughs> oh. But uh, anyway, the, the, the point of that story is that it's easy to hear negative things all day long. And if you don't cause yourself to remember what is good, yeah. if you don't cause yourself to remember what you're thankful for, then you won't be thankful. What can happen is you can become an unthankful person pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And uh, because your mouth will begin to go in the wrong direction and your thoughts begin to go in the wrong direction. Yeah. And it's just so critical to be a thankful person. And one of the things that, that it, when I feel that coming on, what I'll do is I'll do some exercises, you know. One of the exercises, okay, sit down and write down 25 things you're thankful for, you know. You can get to 25 things really fast. Right. And uh, you can get to 50 things really fast, too. You know, 100 might take a little bit longer, and 150 might take a little bit longer. It depends on how, how negative you were that day. But, but, you know, even if you said, oh, okay, I'm going to sit and I'm going to write down, you know, if I'm, I'm feeling that, negativity come I'm feeling that lack of thankfulness come because listen we are so thankful to God for the the glorious things that our God has done for us you know and uh, to, to 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 sometimes just to do the exercise of let me just sit down and, and write down 25 things let me sit down and write down 35 let me sit down and write down 50 things it'll change your day it changes your outlook because what happens is you begin to focus on things that you're thankful for and not what you're unthankful for and it creates a thankful before God you know the word says be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good and his mercies endureth forever be thankful unto him and the, uh, the Bible talks about be thankful you know there was a story and we won't turn there in the interest of time tonight but there's a story in the Bible about the ten lepers you know and uh, Jesus says to them, go show yourself to the priest. There, there are 10 lepers that come to him and they say, Master, we want to be healed. And he said, okay, go show yourself to the priest. Well, that's what the, under the old covenant, the law was that if you had leprosy and you were healed, you had to go show yourself to the priest. And the priest was, had to declare that you were healed in order for you to be considered healed. See, and the, what happened in the old, in, in that time, was if a person was a leper, he had to stay away from the other people because leprosy was contagious. And so they, they had to go around, they had to call out leper, 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 so that people would know not to get close to him, you know, because it was a contagious disease. And so the old covenant law said that if you were a leper that was healed, you had to go show yourself to the priest so that the priest could declare you healed so that you could enter back into to society. So that's why Jesus said, listen, go show yourself to the priest. And uh, so as they're going, they're healed. And uh, what happens is one comes back to give thanks to God. There are nine who did not. And Jesus says to him, uh, you know, here's this one leper that came back. Where's the other nine? What happened to the other nine? Why is there only one who come back to? And he said, you know, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. And what happened was that leper was made whole. Now, there's a wonderful principle in that, that because you don't want to walk around feeling sorry for yourself or feeling beat up or feeling how life has taken advantage of you. Because, listen, we run into people every single day who are like that, who believe that, you know, somebody's taken advantage of them or somebody cheated them or life's cheated them or God cheated them or whatever the case may be. But if you'll focus on being thankful, what can happen is you can be set free. You can be set free from that, that problem. Because that's a horrible way to, to live, to be thinking that somebody's always taking advantage of you or somebody's taking something from you or, or what have you. The best way to live is to be thankful for the things that God has done. There's a magnetism to that spirit, you know, that it draws better things, it draws good things to you. And, uh, you know, the Psalms are full of, of uh, uh, scriptures about, you know, being, uh, uh, being thankful. And uh, um, let's see, we'll just look at just a couple of them. Let's look at, uh, uh, so we get Colossians 3 again. Colossians 3 in chapter 15. Let the peace of God rule in your heart, 
in which you're also called in one body, and be ye thankful. And uh, let's look at Ephesians 5.20. We'll just look at a couple of scriptures. But the, the word is absolutely filled oh, yeah. with, uh, 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 and he talks about, uh, now, now this is, this is what he, how he's talking about you're supposed to be living. He says, be not unwise. This is verse 17, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. He says, be not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Be not drunk with wine, whereas in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto good, uh, unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and submitting yourselves to one another in the fear of God. That's a powerful passage. He's given you an instruction there how to get out of the dumps, how to get out of the blues and blah, how to create that magnetism that the spirit of thanksgiving is going to create for you. He's given you an instruction there. Speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord. You know, even uh, there was a guy named William James, and they called him the father of uh, positive thinking. You know, and what he, and he said, and this is not, he was not a Christian guy, he wasn't a, a religious guy, but what he was, he, he, he focused on, you know, the power of positive thought. And one of the things he said is that people are not, people don't sing because they're happy, they're happy because they sing. And, uh, you know, if you forced yourself to do that, just force yourself to just sing and make melody in your heart singing in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to your heart, with, uh, in your heart before the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember when I first got uh, born again, um, you know, I would, I'd, I'd go to the church and uh, uh, what I would do is I'd pick out two or three of the songs that I liked, you know, that they were singing that 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 particular Sunday, and I, you know, get the, 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 the rhythm or get the melody, you know, maybe get the words. If they had printed the words, sometimes they'd have the words printed or something that, that, so that I could focus on those during the week and so that I could sing those, uh, those songs. And when, uh, when, when I first got born again, they, they, uh, the Integrity Music used to make these tapes. And uh, they, back then they didn't have CDs and things like that. They just had, had tapes. And, uh, but, but, and, and, and you had tape players in your car. They don't even have them in the car anymore. Now they don't even have CD players anymore. But, uh, but back then, they'd have a tape player in your car, you know. And I'd play those tapes, and I'd play them everywhere I'd go, everywhere I'd drive, I'm playing those yeah. tapes, you know, those integrity music. And they were all the word. They were based on the word. So it wasn't just the song, but it, they were singing the word. So that you get the word cemented in, in, into your heart. And that's what I was doing. I didn't know it. But I was singing to myself and speaking to myself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord. And uh, uh, it changes your mood. It changes your direction. It changes just the magnetism of, 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 of who you are. There's a magnetism that goes with that. Well, again, in the interest of time, I mean, you can look, some, you know, you can, there's some other scriptures. First Thessalonians 5, 18. Psalms 107, 1. Philippians 4, 6. 2 Corinthians 9, 15. Psalm, did, you say, did you say those last two again? Um, Thessalonians what we say? 5, Ephesians 5, 20. Ephesians 5, 20. Yeah. Philippians 4, 6. Psalm 107, 1. 2 Corinthians 9, 15, Psalms 106, 1, Psalms 105, 1, Psalms 118, 1 through 18, Psalm 100, which is one of my favorite ones. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. Right? And Romans 1, 21. Just make yourself a list of the different scriptures and so forth and focus on being thankful. It's so easy to focus on what you're lacking or what you don't have or how annoyed you are about this or annoyed you are about that. you got to force yourself to right. be thankful because yes. be ye thankful. And uh, Psalm 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. 
Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. He's telling you the protocol to enter his presence. He's t- to get yourself up to enter his presence. You know, in, 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 in again, in the interest of time, we won't turn there. But one of my favorite scriptures is 1 Samuel 30, where uh, the people, uh, the, the David and his men, they come back to the city, Ziklag, where they it's been destroyed by the enemy, and the enemy has taken all of their... Um, wives and children and all their goods and all their stuff and gone off with them and all they they come back and it's just a looted city you know and it's just ruins it's burned it's ruins that are burned and and the people are all weeping and crying and everybody said said the, you know said they lifted up their voices and wept and cried till they had no more power to weep and uh, but david encouraged himself in the lord that's what he did he was singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in his heart. That's how he's encouraging himself to the Lord. And at that point, then he says, now he says to the priest, bring me the ephod, which is how they heard the voice of God in, in, in those days. It's an interesting point because sometimes you can be so down that you can't get into the presence of God. Sometimes you can be so overrun with troubles and problems and so forth that you can't even get a word. And you need to get yourself up to because the protocol to come into the presence of God is singing and making melody in your heart before God. And you can build yourself up to the point where, okay, now I can get a word. Now I can get into the, the presence of God. Now I can, I can hear God. I'm not distracted by all these problems and things like that. So that's a, a protocol to enter the presence of God. And there we see it, it modeled mirrored by David in, 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 in that, that, you know, the people are, are, are incredibly distraught. David himself is incredibly distraught because his wives and his children are gone and his stuff has been destroyed. And, uh, but he gets a word. But when, after he encourages himself in the Lord, then he gets the word. I, I just encourage you, make it a point. Be a person who encourages yourself in the Lord. Don't expect other people to do it. Don't believe that somebody else is going to pick you up and somebody else is going to lift you up and somebody else is going to get you into the presence of God. It's probably not going to happen. Uh, it'd be rare if it does happen. You'd have to call Pastor Gail. <laughs> if you didn't call Pastor Gail, it probably didn't happen. You know, if you call Pastor Gail, it will happen. But anyway, but it's something that, that you need to master if you're going to be in the ministry. If you're going to live a successful Christian life, you've got to master encouraging yourself in the Lord. It's a wonderful quality. It's a tool. It's a weapon. And you need to be able to use that. And you need to get good at using it. You know, practice is what makes perfect. Mm -hmm. You get good at using stuff when you do it more. Thank you, Jesus. I remember this guy one time. I had this guy apply for a job. And he had worked for a friend of mine. And uh, so I thought, well, I'll just call my friend and, and ask, you know, get a, uh, a, 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 a reference, you know. So I called him and he said, well, you know, he said the guy, he said the guy did, the guy worked for me for many years. He said, uh, he said, I guess he said, he, he, you know, he knew what he was doing. He said, I guess there's, there's, he said, if, if I had one comment to make about the guy, he said, it would be this. He said, if, if you ask the guy to do a repetitive task, and he did it 50 times, it would take just as long the 50th time as it did the first time, you know? And he said, there's just something about the guy. He just, he didn't learn the, the habitual, you know, cause you, you ought to get better at it, you right. know? And he said, he just didn't, didn't get better at it. He just didn't learn. So uh, anyway, interesting, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> we'd all hope that we get better, you know, yes. doing those things. Anyway, so I just, you know, I encourage you. And uh, God bless you. And uh, hallelujah. Had somebody come in. Mike, would you look out there? Had somebody come into the door? I think maybe it's a, a, a delivery from UPS or somebody. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Huh? Thank you.
Friday night. Yeah, Friday night. So Friday night, we'll be broadcasting from uh, Miami on Friday night. We're doing a, a, a faith crusade in Miami this Friday night and this Saturday morning. And uh, uh, what are we calling that? Faith Revive Faith Revive Miami. And uh, anyway, we're, we're looking forward to it. We'll have, for those of you that speak Spanish, uh, we're going to have, uh, we'll have uh, Spanish translation in, 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 uh, available. And uh, so we'll, it's, we'll, it's bilingual. Most of the people that are coming there are primarily Spanish-speaking people. And, uh, but we have a wonderful opportunity. Some friends of ours have set up uh, an opportunity there for us to minister in, uh, in Miami. We're very excited about it. Yes. And, uh, and anyway, God bless you. Thank you so much. We appreciate, we know you have other things you could do with your time. And we appreciate you joining us. We appreciate you watching. And uh, God bless you. And uh, uh, make it a point to exercise yourself in the gift of thanksgiving and in the gift of being thankful. You, you will not regret being, being exercised in that gift. Thank you again for joining us. And God bless you. And we will see you Friday night in Miami. Amen.